I just got my RTX 3080 and we're already talking about the RTX 4080. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. Now this piece of leaked information comes from the Twitter user copite 7 kimi You know him, you love him, he's a great leaker, and this is what he had to say about what could be the upcoming RTX 4080. So, he says, quote, I'm afraid the next-gen GPU hopper based on MCM was delayed. Is Jensen gonna draw a new roadmap instead? It looks very probable. Then below that, someone gave their ideas on what they thought it would be produced on, and below that, copite 7 kimi responded with, 5 nanometers is right. So real quick, if you don't know what he's talking about, for a little while here, there's been some rumors going around that the next generation of NVIDIA cards coming out would be based on the hopper architecture, at least that's what the code name was going to be, and it was going to use an MCM approach to the design. Now, MCM stands for multi-chip module, and essentially what that means is that they are going to take multiple GPUs and connect them somewhat like the AMD Infinity Fabric, and apparently that would allow them to get a lot more cores on the die and, you know, just get a lot more performance out of it because of the way that chips are yielded. So, if you take a look at an RTX 3090, for example, it's an enormous die, and the yields on that might not be quite as good as a much smaller die so you know to get better yields you could do something like make a bunch of little dies take the best ones and then put them all on the same substrate allowing you to get more good GPUs out the door now this does seem like a very good approach but for a little while here I've been thinking that you know we're probably not quite ready for that and that does seem to be the case as it looks like at least according to copite 7 kimi it is going to be delayed and we will be moving on to another monolithic die and at this time it's going to be produced on 5 nanometer which should be an enormous upgrade over 8 nanometer now we don't necessarily know if it's going to come from Samsung or TSMC, but my bet's on Samsung. And the reason why I say Samsung is because, you know, NVIDIA just signed a deal with Samsung. They just signed a new deal to produce more chips on the 8 nanometer node. And to be honest with you, there are a lot of people who are trying to get dies out of TSMC right now. And so I think NVIDIA probably just doesn't want to fight for all of that space. They're probably just going to want to go with Samsung again because Samsung's going to have a lot less business for them to compete with, which should allow NVIDIA to get a lot more good GPUs. And they shouldn't have to, you know, worry about, okay, well, Apple's going to take this amount and, you know, AMD's going to take this amount and then we're only going to be able to produce X amount. You know, that does seem to be a huge constraint for AMD right now when you take a look at their CPUs and GPUs. It seems like probably the biggest reason as to why they can't meet demand now. NVIDIA should hopefully be able to meet demand a little bit faster considering the fact that they can just, you know, sign a new deal with Samsung and as long as they get enough PCB components and PCBs, well, then they can produce a lot more GPUs. And so I think that's the main reason as to why they're going to want to go with, you know, Samsung once again. But, you know, either way, going from an 8 nanometer Samsung node, which is essentially the improved version of their 10 nanometer node, and then going all the way down to 5 nanometers should be a pretty huge improvement. And, you know, that should allow them to get enough density to make another large IPC jump, because if you take a look at the current GPUs that NVIDIA has created, they, uh, you know, the main structure of the SMs or streaming multiprocessors is that you have, you know, a block of FP32 cores, then you have a block of FP32 slash int, and that's how they were able to double the amount of FP32 cores, which did allow them to get enormous improvements in their compute performance, though it does have a little bit of a drawback because, you know, when you have the one block as FP32 slash integer, what that means is anytime an integer operation comes across the SM, it means you can only use half of the FP32 cores because the way that their architecture works, it just means that, you know, that integer operation has to go through that block and then all those FP32 cores on that block that are split with the integer cores, well, they, they just can't work at the same time. You know, I'm not entirely sure why that is, but it just seems to be the case. So if they have extra density with 5 nanometer, they can go for a wider architecture, which should allow them, as long as they increase everything in the GPU, such as, you know, the amount of ROPs, the amount of cache they have on the die, as well as the speed of the cache, and the amount of bandwidth coming from the memory, well then, they should be able to get a huge improvement in their IPC, so they wouldn't even necessarily have to drive up the clocks to get a huge improvement over their Ampere GPUs, but, you know, going to 5 nanometer, they might actually get an increase in clock speed as well, so you could be talking about GPUs that do hit upwards of 2.2, 2.3, or even 2.5 gigahertz and they have an enormous IPC lift so we could be looking at easily another 50% jump in terms of performance per watt here which you know that's really really impressive stuff and so that's definitely going to be very competitive against what AMD is planning because I think AMD as well is going for another 50% performance per watt increase so it looks like this next generation of GPUs may be coming out sooner than we thought you know I'm hearing that it might even come out late 2021 I, I'm not entirely sure if that's true it could end up being early 2022 we'll just have to wait and see but you know either way we're just over three months into the life 
price range of the RTX 3080. I just got one. And here we are talking about the RTX 4080 and it's looking really, really fast already. So it just goes to show you, you go to try and buy something new and it's pretty much already obsolete. Or in this case, you can't even buy it by the time it's obsolete. That'd be pretty funny if we, I mean, it wouldn't be funny, it'd be pretty sad. But you know, if we end up getting through the majority of the life cycle of these RTX 30 cards and most people still aren't able to even buy them by the time we're releasing RTX 40, that would be absolutely outrageous. I don't think that's the case. You know, I've talked about in a previous video, but there should be an enormous increase in the amount of stock available by the time quarter one 2021 rolls around, at least for certain GPUs. So if you take a look at like the RTX 3070 and 3060 Ti, by the time, you know, maybe February rolls around, those cards should be a lot, lot easier to get. But February could roll around and we could be sitting here still not being able to get any GPUs. Yay! But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about these RTX 4000 leaks? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.